On today's show, Nissan effectively confirms the rumors were true by announcing its plans to close its Barcelona facility and bring just one new electric vehicle to market in the next few years will take place. Elon Musk confirms that the Cybertruck won't be shrunk down in size ahead of its launch, and the largest electric airplane yet completes its first successful flight. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup Show from New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. We are 100% Kiwi and we're 50% community owned. Why not switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another Ecotech Roundup Show. I hope that you and yours are well and safe and well done to New Zealand for discharging that last COVID-19 patient from hospital. Good job, Jacinda and good job, Ashley. And in case you didn't know, one of my chickens was named Ashley by the team at Ecotricity to honor the great work being done to keep Kiwis safe from coronavirus. Last week, I discussed some rumors that were floating around about major restructuring at Nissan caused by a dramatic drop in market share and turmoil following the ousting of former CEO Carlos Ghosn amidst claims of fraud. This week, Nissan confirmed those rumors, announcing a global 20% drop in production and the closing of its Barcelona production facility where the ENV200 is currently made and where staff are already protesting the closure. At a special press briefing, the company also confirmed it will be bringing just two new electric models to market in the next three years. The Nissan Aria, which will be sold in Europe, Asia and North America, and a Japanese-only market, K-Class EV. The slides shown mention the LEAF and the ENV200, but Nissan's pivot away from EVs towards its e-power series hybrids is really a big disappointment. Tesla has officially announced a series of price cuts to its lineup of electric vehicles, slashing as much as $5,000 US dollars off the price of getting behind the wheel. Combined, they drop the price of the Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus to $39,190, which is a $2,000 price drop. Meanwhile, the entry-level Model S now starts at $76,190, and the entry-level Model X drops to $81,190, both the result of a $5,000 price cut. Sadly, the Model Y remains the same price that it was before the price cuts, as it's Tesla's newest and most in-demand model at the moment. Mercedes-Benz has officially begun deliveries of its high-end EQV electric minivan in Europe, sharing the same body and chassis as well as a 100 kilowatt hour, 90 kilowatt hour usable battery pack and 150 kilowatt front wheel drivetrain as a Mercedes-Benz eVito, the EQV is designed to be the more car-like of the two vehicles, with an interior that's closer to those found in Mercedes-Benz's cars. At €71,388, a price which includes a 17% sales tax, it's out of the price point for many, but with a choice of two different wheelbases and optional seating layouts for six, seven or eight passengers, I'm thinking it's going to be quite popular with those looking to build themselves an electric RV, or those who regularly need to transport more than five. For the last few months, there's been discussion of Tesla potentially changing the size of the upcoming Cybertruck to ensure that it's not too big to fit in standard single car garages, can cope with smaller roads in markets like Europe, and doesn't go overweight on some market's weight limits for private passenger cars. But this week, Elon Musk confirmed via Twitter that despite telling Jay Leno on this week's episode of Jay Leno's Garage that a 5% reduction would take place, Tesla is in fact keeping the Cybertruck the same size as the prototype. The reason? It was just too tough to change the dimensions while keeping the essence of Cybertruck. Musk hinted, though, when he made the announcement on Twitter that a smaller pickup may be on the way in the future for markets where a smaller pickup would make much more sense than the current Cybertruck. Watch this space. Lower gas prices have got some people worrying that the financial incentive to make the switch to an electric vehicle will be lessened. But during a media call this week that I was part of, Ford's director of global electrification, Mark Kaufman, said that Ford isn't worried at all that lowering gas prices will have a negative impact on sales of the upcoming Ford Mustang Mark E. 
Even with gas prices lower than they have been for a long time, Kaufman noted that other factors, including CO2 targets, means that a shift to electric is inevitable. Right now, he says the company sees 28% of its passenger vehicles being all electric by 2030. That's a big increase on the 2.7% electric vehicle share within Ford that exists today. There's more coming from Ford in the coming weeks, although I can't say anything about it, so keep your eyes peeled. Singapore-based company Azura Marine has officially celebrated the inaugural launch of its very first all-electric solar yacht, the Aquamania 40 Eclipse. Fitted with a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack and a pair of 10 kilowatt electric motors, the yacht promises 24 7 operation thanks to a 56 square meter solar array on its roof. With three double guest cabins and two single crew cabins, the yacht is capable of cruising almost anywhere without stopping at a speed of around four knots. But if you need to go faster, it can max out at 10 knots if required. The downside? The price. At a cool half million dollars, it's not going to be something you'll be spending next year's tax rebates on. At least, nope, I'm, I'm not going to go there. Ford has confirmed this week that its ongoing collaborative partnership with Volkswagen will see it use Volkswagen's MEB electric vehicle platform as a basis for an all-new European-only electric car. The MEB, for those who don't know, is the platform on which the Volkswagen ID3 and Volkswagen ID4 are based, and it's already underpinning a number of new promised vehicles from Volkswagen's sister brands like Audi, Skoda and Seat. While Ford does have its own all-electric vehicle platform, on which the Ford Mustang Mark E is based, it does make sense to use Volkswagen's MEB for a smaller, more budget-oriented vehicle that will suit European buyers. Volkswagen will in turn likely get Ford's plug-in hybrid drivetrain from its upcoming Ford F-150 plug-in hybrid, giving it a plug-in hybrid pickup model to use in Europe. Free supercharging has long been a purchase perk for Tesla Model S and Model X, at least it is if you happen to buy from a point in time when Tesla is actually offering it. Over the years, free supercharging has been offered as part of Tesla's referral program. And more recently, it was actually added as a standard feature to new Model S and Model X to try and boost sales of both vehicles when more customers are opting for a Model 3 instead. But this week, as part of those drops in prices that I announced earlier on, Tesla has removed mention of free supercharging from Model S and X. Sure, the Model S and X are now $5,000 cheaper than they were, but you'll be paying for supercharging just like everyone else. And frankly, I think that's a really good move on Tesla's part, as supercharging was never really making Tesla any money. As part of its push to get more people behind the wheel of the Chevrolet Bolt EV, General Motors has published a series of videos it's calling the Bolt EV Academy. Available on YouTube, they focus on different aspects of electric vehicle ownership with a specific focus on the Bolt. And while those who watch this channel and ones like it may find it's a bit old hat, it could help those in markets where dealers aren't known for their knowledge or support of electric vehicles. While the Bolt EV isn't available in New Zealand, it's well worth trying to take a look at these videos as they do contain some great basic EV knowledge that you might find interesting, even if it's just to compare what the Bolt offers to what EVs offer in New Zealand. We all know by now that if you have a solar panel system on your home and your local utility supports it, it's possible to get negative electricity bills. It's been a particularly cool thing, especially if it's been a sunny month and you've managed to export more electricity to the grid than you've consumed. But what about getting paid to charge your electric car, even if you don't have solar panels? For EV drivers in the UK last weekend, that's exactly what happened when Octopus Energy customers, specifically those with grid-aware charging equipment, were able to get paid to charge their cars. That's because the UK grid, which by the way has been coal-free for months now, was just simply producing too much electricity. The solution was to use the intelligent charging tech in grid-connected charging equipment to charge up customers' cars for free. It sure beats having to pay surplus charges for generating too much electricity. I mean, for the electricity generators, that is. And finally, we love ourselves all kinds of clean transportation on this channel. And we've been following the amazing developments in electric planes. 
with keen interest for some really long time. Well, this week, electric plane specialist Manix, in collaboration with Aerotech, successfully completed a test flight of the first ever electrified Cessna Caravan 208B. Flown at Moses Lake, Washington, the flight was a complete success and lays the groundwork for passenger carrying commercial planes in the near future. The Cessna Caravan is one of the most successful middle mile planes in the world. And this electrified version can take nine passengers, which is more than any other electric plane to date. I cannot wait to take my first electrified flight. What about you? And on that note, we are done for this week's show. Thanks for joining me. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And while you've got that browser open, if you haven't already, why not switch to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch and you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean, green, renewable power that will keep the land beautiful for many generations to come. I'll be making some more fun content for you all to enjoy next week. But until then, please stay safe. Remember to wash your hands and stay healthy. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite. See you next time.